Welcome everybody, my name is Ricardo Vinuesa. I'm an associate professor at KTH in Stockholm, and I'm going to show you some of our earlier work on pressure gradient turbulent boundary layers studied with high fidelity simulations. Now, uh, the motivation for this work comes from this slide by Airbus, where we can actually look at the different components of the drag in a typical airliner. So around 50% of the total drag is associated with the friction, uh, and 40% of the drag comes from the lift-induced component, which happens when we have wind tip vortices. For example, with finite wings like the ones that we have in this airplane. So it turns out that studying turbulent boundary layers with pressure gradients and finite wings uh, can potentially help us to understand around 90% of the total drag in commercial airliners. Now, uh, what happens when we have a turbulent boundary layer uh, that is decelerated, when we have an adverse pressure gradient? Here at the top, we have a typical zero pressure gradient turbulent boundary layer. And of course, as the Reynolds number increases, we are having larger and larger scales. When we decelerate that, as in the bottom, uh, we have a strong wall normal convection. We have a lot of vertical velocity. And that does two things. The first thing is a convection of small scales from close to farther away from the wall. And the second aspect is that we develop very energetic large scales here in the outer region. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, for a moderate Reynolds number at a pressure gradient um, parameter of beta around 1, which is not a very strong pressure gradient, the wall normal velocity, which we can see here, raises to around four times uh, in an average pressure gradient compared with a zero pressure gradient case. So the wall normal convection is going to be an essential ingredient of adverse pressure gradient turbulent boundary layers. Now, uh, let's look a bit at the type of simulations that we can do. We use the spectral element code NEC5000. Uh, this code combines the geometrical flexibility of finite elements, eh, which can allow us to solve very complex geometries, with a high order convergence of spectral methods, in such a way that we can have this sort of geometry that we have here, uh, which is basically, well, turbulent wings of uh, moderate complexity, but with very high accuracy, which of course is going to be very beneficial when we want to solve uh, turbulence uh, in, this, uh, in these moderately complex cases. So to give you an idea of the type of detail that we can obtain, you can see this visualization over here where we are looking at vertical structures. So in these structures, uh, this is basically associated with uh, vortices, coherent vortices in the flow. You can see how when we fly around this wing, uh, we have a progressively decelerated boundary layer, which uh, leads to more and more energetic scales and a thicker boundary layer on the suction side of the wing. Uh, you can see as we fly around here that we have a little bit of incipient separation. In fact, the flow uh, has 30% backflow. Uh, so we have a boundary layer that is attached. But uh, the study of these backflow events that you see here uh, are quite important also when it comes to uh, assessing uh, mean separation mechanisms. Now we're going to fly on the pressure side of the wing. So we're actually going to see how uh, over here we understand, uh, well, basically an attenuation of those turbulent extractors because of the slight favorable pressure gradient that is slightly accelerating the boundary layer on the pressure side. Now, you can observe the level of detail that we can achieve in these simulations that really allows us to study turbulence in a quite complex setting. Uh, the two boundary layers merge in a shear layer after the train edge, uh, eventually forming the typical von Karman shedding in the wake, which again we can actually characterize uh, with a quite high level of detail. So this sort of simulation is what we're going to conduct in order to be able to assess uh, turbulence in all these cases. Here I'm showing you uh, four different Reynolds numbers. This is a NACA 4412 wing section um, at Reynolds numbers uh, ranging from 100,000, which would be the low Reynolds number, all the way to 1 million. And in 1 million, uh, we actually have aerodynamic properties which are uh, similar uh, to those that you could get uh, in full scale. So actually the aerodynamics, the polars that you can get in this wing, where you can really observe the very wide range of scales that we can have in this complex turbulent boundary layer, uh, we really can see uh, quite interesting dynamics. And this database with all these Reynolds numbers can be found in this reference that you see down here. Uh, so this is Binuesa and others, International Journal of Heat and Fluid Flow uh, 2018. Uh, so all the data, all the turbulence statistics, but also spectra, time series, weight characteristics, all of that can be found in that database. And what we're going to do now is dive a bit more in detail into the various conclusions that one can get by analyzing this data. Yeah. Why did we choose the, this case? Well, it uh, turns out that we can have uh, quite uh, accurate simulations, and this is the one million case 
uh, up to quite high Reynolds numbers. I mean, the uh, momentum thickness-based Reynolds number is 6,000. The friction Reynolds number that you can see here is over 700, so there is quite some scale separation. Uh, this gives us um, basically a resolution uh, of over 2 billion grid points, so it's a quite large simulation. Note that the resolution that you see here is slightly coarser than that for a DNS. Uh, this is uh, a case that is quite large, but in the lower Reynolds number cases, we have a resolution that is quite close to that of a DNS, uh, and this is the spectral element mesh that you can find. Uh, here we're not showing the individual um, uh, grid points within the elements, this is just a spectral element mesh, uh, but this can give us an idea of the type of, uh, of, the type of configuration that we can have uh, in this conformal uh, setting. Okay? Now, uh, it turns out that to study pressure gradient turbulent boundary layers, there is one challenge that comes across very quickly, and it's to determine the boundary layer edge. As you can see here at the bottom, uh, for different pressure gradient intensities on the suction side of the wing, uh, well, the mean flow sometimes has a, a free stream that is decreasing, sometimes it is increasing. Uh, therefore, the typical criteria <clears throat> that we use based on the free stream velocity it cannot be used, no? because there is not a well-defined free stream velocity. However, <clears throat> what we use, and there is this study, uh, Vinuesa and others in physics of fluids, uh, here we develop a methodology which relies on the di diagnostic scaling. So an example of it is shown over here. What we are showing in the diagnostic scaling is the um, turbulence intensity, so we're basically uh, normalizing the fluctuations with the mean flow and the shape factor, and this is to be able to account for the pressure gradient, and that's plotted as a function of the outer scale mean flow. So there is no wall normal location here, there is just a, a turbulence intensity basically plotted as a function of the mean velocity. What is interesting, and here I'm showing a wide range of pressure gradient magnitudes, Reynolds number, a bunch of different uh, boundary layers, and what is interesting is that all these um, profiles uh, in this diagnostic scaling collapse in this point over here where uh, u over u infinity is 0.99, uh, that gives me approximately a value of 0.02 in this uh, diagnostic scale, which is nice because I can basically look for the value where this scaling gives me 0.02, and that will indirectly uh, give me the location of the boundary layer thickness. So that's essentially one way that has worked uh, in a quite robust manner, both for numerical and experimental data sets, to assess uh, the boundary layer edge in pressure gradient turbulent matter layers. Now, uh, why did we choose this NACA 4412? Uh, we have, by the way, an angle of attack of 5 degrees, so the flow is attached, but we have quite some interesting flow conditions here, and it turns out that um, if we exclude the lowest Reynolds number, which is the yellow line, you can see the legend down here, so the various colors are associated with the different Reynolds number cases, uh, all the others um, give us a collapse of the pressure gradient uh, parameter. Here I'm showing you the pressure gradient intensity, which is the rota clauser beta, as a function of the uh, stream waste position uh, on the wing. So uh, the fact that the pressure gradient curves collapse, uh, this is in agreement with the earlier work of Pinkerton, uh, quite some uh, uh, decades ago, uh, who also showed that at high Reynolds numbers, the NACA 4412 is an interesting airfoil because it collapses the pressure gradient distributions. This way, this is a quite interesting uh, property, because this way, uh, by having the same pressure gradient, but different Reynolds numbers, we can study quite complex turbulent boundary layers uh, subjected to the same pressure gradient conditions, but with different Reynolds number effects. And that's basically what we want to identify. Uh, again, the database is in this article in the International Journal of Heat and Fluid Flow, uh, so everything is there. Uh, what I'm showing you, um, on the one hand, is the uh, evolution of the uh, Reynolds theta, eh? and you can see that, of course, the higher Reynolds number cases uh, lead to much higher ID theta, reaching a maximum of 6,000. So the high Reynolds number case, the million wing, uh, is a quite high Reynolds number boundary layer. And the friction Reynolds number, which I'm showing over here, uh, it's interesting because uh, in all the cases, we have a maximum which is around 0.8 of the chord, eh? and that's because beyond that point, even if, the, um, even if the boundary layer thickness uh, keeps increasing, the friction velocity decreases dramatically. Eh? We're getting to a point of almost, almost zero stress at the trailing edge of the wing. This means that the overall product of delta over, uh, multiplied by u tau uh, gets smaller, and that reduces the friction Reynolds number. 
Uh, in any case, the largest Reynolds number that we have, which is the million, gives us an added tau of 707, which again uh, exhibits enough scale separation to look at turbulence in a quite, uh, in a quite uh, meaningful way. Now, more interesting parameters. I mean, what I'm showing you here is the skin friction coefficient, and also, as expected, as we increase the Reynolds number, the skin friction coefficient uh, decreases. Uh, that's uh, something that we can uh, observe in a flat plate, but uh, for a wing with a fixed pressure gradient, we observe the same trend. And over here, I'm showing you the shape factor. Uh, the shape factor, which again uh, exhibits a similar trend. Uh, what is actually quite interesting is that um, as I increase the pressure gradient, both the skin friction coefficient decrease, which is again expected, but also um, the shape factor. Eh? So the ratio that we have of the displacement thickness and the momentum thickness changes in such a way that it gets uh, smaller as I am uh, increasing my, um, my Reynolds number in this case. Okay? So there's quite some interesting trends that I can find both for the skin friction coefficient and for the shape factor. And uh, this is actually an interesting assessment uh, to justify that the 100,000 case behaves differently. Uh, this is another criterion also based on the diagnostic scaling. Yeah? And this is documented in this article in Flow Turbulence and Combustion. Yeah? So you can see the details of the methodology there. Uh, essentially, what we identify is that the 100,000 wing, which is this one, the yellow one, has a region where the profiles do not uh, collapse. Eh? And this is not the case in any of the other uh, wings. This shows that this wing is not well behaved, uh, and this is because the Reynolds number is just too low. And the Reynolds number is low, we force the transition to turbulence with a tripping, but at the end of the day, um, the development is not uh, as we could imagine in a well behaved uh, turbulent boundary. The other wings, have a behavior that is consistent with the development of, uh, well, basically, uh, standard turbulent boundary layers subjected to strong pressure gains. So, something that I believe is quite important is to characterize the intensity of the pressure gradient uh, with respect to zero pressure gradient conditions. I'm showing two, um, basically, two locations, one for a moderate pressure gradient of beta 0.6, another one for a stronger pressure gradient of beta uh, around 2. And I'm showing profiles, you can see the Reynolds numbers uh, down here, uh, where I'm matching a wing profile and a zero pressure gradient profile at the same Aritau. Okay, so the Aritaus are going to be the same. These, of course, are the inner scale mean velocity profiles. What is interesting, these gray profiles are the zero pressure gradients and the colors are corresponding to the wings that you can see here at the bottom. What is interesting is that First of all, the adverse pressure gradient cases are exhibiting a more pronounced wake. Eh? They have a, a larger uh, value of U plus H, eh? the H uh, velocity scaling in units. That's very well uh, known and expected in adverse pressure gradient boundary layers. But what is interesting is that if you look carefully at this figure, the distance between the zero pressure gradient and the adverse pressure gradient decreases as I increase the Reynolds number. So as I go over there, as I'm going to the higher Reynolds number case, you can see that the distance between this guy and that guy is smaller than in the lower Reynolds number case. This allows me to uh, define a metric, yeah? and this metric uh, is over here. This phi is a ratio of the U plus H for the wing divided by that of the zero pressure gradient. So that metric uh, basically measures, in a way, the distance between the adverse pressure gradient case and the zero pressure gradient case. And I show that, I show the evolution of that metric with Reynolds number at two different locations. The yellow dot is uh, the low, uh, so it's at 40% of the chord. The blue dots are at 70% of the chord. <clears throat> when I increase the Reynolds number, what we see is that these lines go down. I can define the same metric for the shape factor, which is another mean flow quantity. Yeah? And again, uh, these uh, two uh, evolutions at two positions go down with Reynolds number. This indicates, or at least suggests, that at low Reynolds number, the effect of the pressure gradient is more intense. Okay? Let's try to corroborate this by looking at the fluctuations. So what I'm showing you here are the um, stream-wise uh, velocity fluctuations and the Reynolds shear stresses. Yeah? So the positive ones are the velocity fluctuations, the negative would be the Reynolds shear stresses. Uh, and I'm doing the same exercise as before. Yeah? I'm showing you the zero pressure gradient case and the different wings at matched friction Reynolds number. This is for low beta, this is for the higher beta. 
What is interesting, if we look at the outer region, eh, so basically over here and over here, is that the distance of the outer region fluctuations, eh, in the basically in the outer peak or outer plateau of the fluctuations, the distance between the wing cases and the zero pressure gradient also gets smaller as I increase the Reynolds number. That's what you can see as I increase the Reynolds number over here. Uh, that's basically in agreement with what I would expect from the mean flow. And what I'm showing you here is a similar metric. And this is phi ratios, which indicate the ratio of the stream wise velocity fluctuations and the ratio of the Reynolds shear stresses from the wing over those of the zero pressure gradient. And once again, in all the cases, these go down with Reynolds number. This is another um, proof that the Reynolds number effects uh, are quite important when we have a pressure gradient. In a low Reynolds number wing, what I have is a less, uh, less mature outer region, the large scales haven't developed yet, and the average pressure gradient effects can be more intense. Now, if I look at a higher Reynolds number wing, uh, what's going to happen? Well, the outer region has already developed, the large scales have been exposed to a zero pressure gradient for longer uh, string-wise development, and therefore they are less prone to be affected by the wall normal convection. Uh, and that's more or less what we can justify with the wall normal velocity that I'm showing you here. Uh, I'm showing you at 70% of the chord, the wall normal velocity as a function of the wall normal coordinate for the various wings, where the yellow is the 100,000 case, and this red over here, that would be the 1 million. So you can see that naturally, at higher Reynolds numbers, the wall normal velocity is lower. Okay? The wall normal velocity acts as a way to understand the effect of the pressure gradient on the turbulence, right? on the turbulent characteristics that I'm having on my band layer. So if I look at the V plus H, this would be the edge velocity uh, in the wall normal direction scale in plus units, as a function of the stream-wise evolution, what I see again is that for higher Reynolds numbers, this value gets smaller. So essentially, for all these boundary layers, when I'm increasing my uh, Reynolds number, my pressure gradient is less effective. And the two things that the pressure gradient uh, uh, does, which is to lift the small scales and create large energetic scales, those things can be done more easily if I have a low Reynolds number case because the outer region is less mature. And so one can actually affect that in a more effective way. When I'm having a much more developed high Reynolds number case, then I'm less effective at doing that. So this is quite some uh, insight that we can get on the effects, combined effects of pressure gradient and uh, Reynolds number. Uh, and I would like to thank you very much for uh, listening today. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank uh, InfraVis, the KTH uh, Visualization Studio and the KTH Digitalization Platform uh, who helped to create this, this video. And again, my social media and my YouTube channel are here. So I'm very happy to uh, answer all your questions and uh, discuss further if you're interested. Thank you very much.